Hello, I'm Jelaine Thaulin, Assistant Director for Instructional Design at the Center for Teaching. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Ryan Mida, Assistant Professor of Jazz and Chair of the Jazz and Global Music Department. Ryan is the recipient of the Course Improvement Grant for the project titled Jazz and Global Ensemble Recording of New Works. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's good. And so let's just start off by you telling us a little bit about your project and what inspired you to do this project? So this is actually very exciting because the actual recording session is happening this weekend, this Sunday. Awesome. Um, and kind of over in, uh, over in the Blair School in our uh, jazz and kind of global music uh, areas, um, we're really trying to find how, you know, improvisational North American music, which uh, jazz is part of kind of flows with other music of the world. So one of the ensembles that we have is called Special uh, Ensemble in Jazz and Global Music. So each year that changes over, um, you know, sometimes it's more jazz focused, sometimes it's more global focused. This year we are doing a Latin jazz ensemble as part of that. And also uh, we have uh, the award-winning Blair Big Band, uh, which I direct. Um, and we cover all kinds of music in there, but sometimes we cover, um, you know, Latin jazz as well as, as a bigger format. So we have this smaller group, smaller Latin jazz group, and then we have this bigger group, uh, the traditional big band that is playing contemporary jazz, but it's also playing, so we're doing some Latin jazz as well. So this weekend, we're actually uh, recording both our small group Latin jazz uh, ensemble, and then uh, our, our big band. And we had been kind of doing some deep dive into some, we were really focusing in on Latin styles. And actually our uh, last concert for the semester is April 14th, and it's gonna be on Alumni Lawn. And we're playing a bunch of different Latin styles uh, from um, all over Latin America. It's really uh, a deep well of different styles. Uh, for the recording, however, it, and it, this wasn't really even planned, um, we've kind of focused on Cuban styles a bit. So, um, but what's really unique about all these uh, compositions that we're recording is the majority of them are written by the students. Nice. Um, so we have uh, four, I'm uh, sorry, three pieces by our Latin jazz group that are, were written by students. Uh, we have two uh, pieces for the big band that were written by students. And then we have two more that are written by other young composers from across the United States. Um, so for the Latin jazz group, um, they're doing a salsa uh, tune. Uh, they're going to do a uh, one tune that's a uh, style called uh, uh, Guaguanco. Mm -hmm. uh, they, and then they're doing a mambo tune, a two, three, son clave. And then for the big band, the Latin tune that we're playing um, is a style called timba, uh, which is from Cuba. And it, that's kind of an interesting uh, style because it's, um, you know, has the Cuban roots, uh, uh, but also has a lot of influence of like American pop and funk and R&B. And then uh, the other pieces that we're recording are new works that are more of the uh, contemporary jazz tradition that we have right now. So that, that are swing, um, one written by uh, one of our students and then another uh, from actually a really great young composer who's only 15 years old. and that's really exciting to like meet, meet a young composer at that point in their, their career and who's already writing at a really incredible level. So that's amazing. after, you know, this, this is from an educational standpoint, this is, you know, multifaceted because the students are getting the experience of recording. Mm -hmm. They're getting, getting that process of, you know, understanding the process of recording and production. And then when we uh, record these pieces, we are able to disseminate them through streaming services and what have you. Um, so it's uh, good for the school, the program, the university, getting our music out there. And it's also really important for these students because they get to have these recordings as a part of their portfolio that they're developing as musicians. Awesome. Could you say like a little bit more about how the grant funds um, will be helping you? Because this is a massive undertaking. Yes, so the grant funds made it possible to like hire the engineer, um, and the, the pr production elements of, of the, um, the project. So uh, we don't have an on-staff uh, 
audio production engineer that's focused on recording. We have so many other things going on at, at Blair. Um, so I bring in uh, somebody, a uh, veteran professional from Nashville here, which is great. We live in Nashville. There's a ton of really great producers and engineers. So I'm bringing in somebody who's really incredible to work with the students. And that's another uh, level of interfaces. The students get to interface with a true like Nashville professional engineer and producer. And um, that's also just a really exciting element. So that's the element that the grant is, uh, without the grant, this would not be possible. We wouldn't be doing it. Awesome. So you've already shared about the impact because I'm already seeing the collaborative element, like you said, and then um, students working with members of the community and being able to have their own portfolios. Could you say, are there any other um, anticipated impact of this really great project? And um, I'm keeping April 14th in my head. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, it's first, first of all, it's really fun. You know, it's a fun opportunity for the students to, to record. It, it's it, not just an educational process, but you know, especially post COVID, I think it's a soulful project, like it, recording music together is, uh, and playing music together is good for the soul. And then you have this, uh, not just the process of recording, but you also have this pro end product that you can be really proud of. And I think that's really important for the students. Um, and then you have the, of course, the interaction with the professional engineers and also um, a, a few other things. So, um, we, we have students, some of these writers uh, are included that win national awards based on these recordings, right? So nice. not only is the recording good for their portfolio, but they can submit it for competitions and win prestigious national and international awards. Um, an example of that, one of the students who he's writing the more contemporary jazz piece, uh, Josh Karras, he's a senior jazz studies major. He was selected by my, uh, our jazz professional organization as one of the best young composers, um, which is extremely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's opportunities like this that not only is this good for their portfolio, but it's good to you know elevate them into like a national level and a national profile, and that's great for the students, but it's also great for Vanderbilt. It is. Um, yeah. Um, so there's that, and. Um, you know, this is also ends up becoming a really good recruit recruitment tool for prospective students, because the first, th you know, we're in that uh, season right now. Uh, the first thing I hear from uh, prospective students is like, I heard a recording of the big band on Spotify. I saw a video of the big band on YouTube. Um, you know, so that's also another really uh, good thing because it, it lets the prospective students, especially now, you know, we think about uh, admissions from a, such a national and international standpoint, um, it really kind of opens the door to prospective students to really see uh, the excellence we have going on at Vanderbilt. I'm just always amazed at, you know, how we start talking about this small grant and then seeing the different connections that one small grant can make. And so it's just really awesome to hear the stories and hear how far reaching some of our grants um, can be. Um, speaking of recruitment, um, we are entering our third round of the internal teaching grants and the application deadline is May 2nd. What recommendations would you have for others who would like to apply for the internal teaching grants? Uh, number one, just apply. You know, <laughs> like what was has been really great in meeting some of the other grantees it, and this is actually probably my favorite part of the grant so far was meeting all the other grantees and hearing about all these really cool projects everyone's doing across campus. I would, I'm going to, I'm going to apply again. I don't know what it'd be for. I'm going to apply <laughs> <again>. <laughs> just, just so I can meet everybody and hear everybody's really cool projects. Um, because it, it's one thing to, yeah, I'm really passionate about the cool things that um, our program is doing and what we're doing in the Blair School but it's also super exciting to hear what all the creative things are happening all across campus, across different disciplines. So apply just to meet your, your colleagues and hear all the cool stuff that they're doing. Um, and think a little bit outside the box, like what, you know, if having just a little bit more funds just can open up some different doors for your teaching and for your students. Um, so what, what's something creative and impactful uh, 
and what kind of opportunities can be provided to your students that might not be able to be provided otherwise. Yes, um, we thank the provost office for providing these funds. Um, it has been amazing because in our conversations, um, even yesterday when we met, um, there were different people already talking about collaboration. There was a collaboration between music and art um, with instruments. And so you're right. So even you do the grant based on your creativity, meet other people and then other grant ideas even come. How would you um, describe your teaching philosophy? Um, my teaching philosophy is summed up in uh, two words, students first. So they are the number one priority um, and really focusing on what they need um, in, in their development. Because the students that, that come through my classes, not all of them are music majors, uh, most of them are, um, but really kind of assessing what each individual student needs and how to uh, foster and mentor their development. Thank you so much. I think that's a nice note to end with student first. Is there anything else you'd like to share as we wrap up our time together? No, I'm just super grateful to have this opportunity and to have met uh, our colleagues. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a really exciting recording session this Sunday. I'll take a ton of pictures and share them with you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you.